This video is brought to you by Squarespace, the best all-in-one platform for any of your website building needs. Hey guys, it's Celestia, and Elon Musk is ruining Twitter so much that artists are legitimately leaving it for Tumblr. So today, we're gonna talk about why. Specifically, how the new changes to Twitter will impact artists, whether or not artists should be leaving it as a result, and why Tumblr is actually potentially viable for art again, at least in my humble, correct opinion. But before we get into the blue checkmark nightmare, let me take a moment to talk about something that doesn't suck. Today Today's sponsor, Squarespace. Squarespace is a website building and hosting tool that I've personally been using for months now to run my art studio, and ever since building that site, I genuinely swear by it now. It made starting that business easy, which is saying something given that the studio offers a lot of different services that all need to be displayed clearly with examples. Their gallery features allowed me to set that up and show them in a way that looks professional and clean, and their automatic image scaling let me upload and arrange a wide variety of different sizes of example images without having to manually crop them. And their e-commerce integration means that the studio can actually sell both goods and services directly from the site, which is a level of convenience that I can't overstate the value of. If you're looking to build a polished, beautiful portfolio to share your art with the world, an online store to start selling it easily and seamlessly, or even both at once, I can't recommend Squarespace enough, because there's a reason I was already using it long before the sponsorship, and it's because it's good. Anyway, thank you so much to Squarespace for sponsoring this video, and please go check out squarespace.com to get a free trial to build your own website, because no matter what your site needs are, they have a template for you. And once you've built it, go to squarespace.com slash duchesscelestia to save 10% on your first website or domain purchase. All right, so Twitter. Everyone hates it, everyone's always hated it, but for a very long time, it was still home to one of the largest art communities out there. Because hating Twitter has pretty much never meant not using Twitter for most people. It's toxic, it's a cesspool of hate and cancel culture, it's poisoning the youth of America, whatever. It's still where the vast majority of artists online go. And as a result, the art community there has always been pretty huge. And in fairness, it still is. A lot of artists did leave Twitter recently, and a lot more will continue to. But because the community was already so large, that number is still exponentially smaller than the number of artists staying. Things are, however, changing pretty drastically, and those changes are making many artists question their futures on the platform, so let's talk about why. I don't think I'll be the first to tell anyone this, but in case you somehow didn't know before now, Elon Musk finally did buy Twitter, after months of everyone wondering if he'd succeed in backing out like he tried to or not. I'm sure he would've, but Twitter sued him, so he didn't have a lot of options. His motivations for wanting to buy it in the first place are unclear. If you believe him, he bought it to defend free speech from the corruption of big Twitter and save humanity. Thank you, anime protagonist Elon Musk. Personally, I'm more convinced that he's a man-child addicted to tweeting and threw a tantrum when his favorite bird app started trying to tell him there were things he couldn't tweet. And it just so happens that when a billionaire throws a tantrum, they spend $44 billion to make themselves feel better. That's mostly a joke and obviously just my opinion. And you might notice from that opinion that I don't exactly like the guy, so take it with a grain of salt. Whatever his motivations really are, he does claim that the massive changes he's making to the platform are for the sake of protecting free speech and unlocking Twitter's potential as a platform for open, uncensored debate and discussion. Which does sound like a good thing, but pretty much everyone is worried that given how toxic and vitriolic Twitter has always been, Elon rolling back content moderation even further to allow for worse is gonna mean the spread of hate and cruelty without anyone or any system in place to stop it. And those fears have been pretty much proven correct, as a Montclair State University study showed that within 12 hours of his acquisition of Twitter, 398 hate tweets an hour hour were made, which had almost quadrupled from the 84 hate tweets an hour in the week prior, with things looking like they're only gonna get worse from there. It doesn't help that Elon has openly stated his intention to lay off half of Twitter's staff, with 3,700 jobs already having been eliminated with little to no notice for employees, many of whom worked in content moderation. He plans to make a content moderation council with members of many diverse viewpoints, and claims that no changes will be made to content moderation until that council has been created. But while policies may not have been changed yet, he's made it abundantly clear that those changes are coming, and I would imagine having a huge number of content moderation staff laid off isn't having a great impact on how well the site is currently being moderated either. I can't say that for sure, but I do think it's likely. Regardless, none of this is directly explaining why artists in particular should be worried about the changes he's making. Although wanting to avoid a platform that's potentially collapsing into vitriolic chaos where hate-fueled verbal attacks go unchecked is probably something that's universal to most people, artists and non-artists alike. But that really is just the beginning, because amongst other things, Elon has now made a very significant change to verification on Twitter. A lot of major advertisers have paused their campaigns on the platform following his acquisition, largely because they, like everyone else, are cautious and worried about what direction he'll take things in. And as a result of that, Twitter, whose primary source of income is from advertisers, has taken a pretty big financial hit. To try to supplement that and make Twitter Blue a more viable, primary
primary source of income for the site, Elon has now made it so that anyone who pays its monthly fee of $8 can get a blue check mark, denoting them as a verified account. Prior to this, verification was only for accounts that had actually proven their identities and were significant public figures. And that blue check mark was a way for people to check whether or not the accounts they were following were authentic. Now that everyone can get one for $8, the spread of misinformation and fake accounts has dramatically increased, which shows how much Elon actually thought this through, because he ended up dealing with an influx of Elon Musk parody accounts abusing his own foolproof system to appear legitimate. He banned them all, of course, because actual racist assholes saying the n-word at a record-breaking rate is apparently not nearly as problematic to him as a troll with a parody account saying his name is short for elongated muskrat. All of this came after him proudly saying, comedy is now legal on Twitter. His priorities are interesting, but let's be honest, that's not news. What's relevant to artists about the blue checkmark fiasco is that it's not just verification anymore. Elon is now planning to change up the algorithm to have verified Twitter blue users be the primary focus, meaning that posts by people paying him $8 a month get boosted to the top of everyone's recommendations, while posts by those who don't will be suppressed. This is still just a plan, as of me writing this, at least, that may change, and it hasn't been confirmed to be happening quite like that yet. And new information suggests that he might not be changing the whole algorithm, but rather just separating Twitter into sections. Like, you know how TikTok's homepage is the for you page, where the algorithm recommends you stuff it thinks you'll like, but you can switch to your following page instead to see content from the people you actually follow? It sounds like Elon's plan is to make Twitter's homepage a verified tab, where only posts from Twitter blue users will be promoted, but you'll still be able to switch to your following tab to see the people that you actually follow, regardless of whether or not they pay him. I don't know for sure whether or not that's the case. Elon himself has basically said, there will be a million changes, we'll keep the ones that work out. But even if that is the case, that still means a massive blow to the art community for those of us not willing to pay for the nightmare. First of all, most people on TikTok focus 90% on their For You page and vastly less on their following page, and I strongly doubt it would be any different for Twitter. Second of all, yes, a following page means that our existing followers can still see the art that we post, but not being promoted at all to people who don't already follow us because we're not verified means losing a huge amount of our ability to grow our followings and connect with the community. We're pretty much just limited to the circles of artists that we already followed, and who followed us. And finding new ones would either require them to be Twitter blue users, or for us to actively seek them out, and vice versa. Some artists are using the lists feature to prepare for this change and make sure that they still have a way to see posts from the people they want to see, regardless of the algorithm, which will hopefully be an effective way to at least keep track of the artists that we already know we want to keep up with, and maybe even find others by looking through the other people in a list that you were added to. But it doesn't change that if Twitter blue users do, in fact, end up getting post priority over everyone else, which I don't doubt will happen so that Elon can desperately incentivize people to pay him money, the art community will definitely see some changes, and I can't foresee any of them being good. It's already starting to divide artists based on whether or not they're willing to pay for Twitter blue just to maintain their ability to have their art seen. Some are saying that they struggled and worked for years to build their followings there, and $8 a month is worth keeping it. Others are saying that anyone who does pay $8 a month is betraying the art community by basically submitting to this oppressive change and showing Elon that he can get away with doing it. The hostility between the two sides of this coin is only growing, and unfortunately, I imagine that it will continue to. And that's only one reason artists are leaving Twitter. There are also those of us who quite simply don't want to use and support a platform that Elon Musk owns, because they don't want to support him. There are those of us who are worried about the content moderation, or lack thereof, and don't want to stick around on a platform where hate and slurs can be spread without any punishment or consequence. There are those who are worried about Elon's unpredictability and what it means for the future of the platform, and they want to jump ship before he sinks it. There are a lot of reasons why artists are leaving, is my point. And it seems like it might actually be a turning point for the art community to move away from Twitter as a primary platform. Twitter as a whole lost 1.3 million users in the first week after Elon's acquisition of it, with roughly 877,000 accounts being deactivated by the account holders, and 497,000 being suspended by Twitter itself. And while that's still just a drop in the bucket compared to the over 396 million total users, it still shows that this change is not a welcome one to a lot of people, and that it might be enough to shift at least some of the community's focus to other platforms. That said, as much as I would like Twitter to be a thing of the past, I don't think it will be. It's still home to one of the largest art communities out there, especially internationally. And a sentiment that I've heard from many is that they'll go wherever their favorite artists are, regardless of the problems that platform may have. So while a significant number of us may be leaving, unless enough of us do so to prompt others to follow, it probably won't result in any long-term change. What it might do, though, is make artists branch out more, so that even if they don't leave Twitter altogether, they do have alternatives to it that they can use simultaneously, or switch to in the worst-case scenario that Elon actually just straight-up kills Twitter. 
And in a shocking move that I had personally not at all been expecting, Tumblr just looked at that opportunity and may have used it to make itself a viable option for that again. At least it looks that way. Most of us know that Tumblr's been in decline for a long time now. In December of 2018, they made a decision to ban all not safe for work content from the platform, alienating a massive portion of the community that used Tumblr specifically for that content, as well as a huge number of not safe for work artists, some of whom had even established their following so concretely there that it was how they were making a living. Not only that, but to enforce the ban, they began using bots to scan every post on the platform for any form of nudity, and the bots were exceptionally bad at it. They would pretty much mark any post with skin tones as explicit and hide it, at which point you could appeal that for human review and have it reinstated. But for a lot of artists, their completely safe for work art was being flagged and hidden within the first few minutes of it being posted, meaning that the few moments where art is liable to get the most engagement and get the ball rolling in terms of likes and reblogs were spent with it not being visible to anyone. A lot of this combined to drive a lot of artists away from the community, at which point a lot of us, myself included, turned to Twitter. And while Tumblr did work to improve the bot flag and review system, it was too late for most, as the damage had been done. The site went from getting 521 million unique visitors a month to just 370 million in the span of two months. And this was widely regarded as not only the death of Tumblr's art community, but the death of the platform as a viable mainstream form of social media altogether. Following the um, global health event of 2020, I'm still not sure how much YouTube will let me say about that, so I don't want to risk it. Regardless, anyway, during that time period, Tumblr did start to make a gradual recovery, though not to its former glory at all. But by 2021, Gen Z finding it and deciding it was worth a shot brought it back to semi-relevance, at least in some circles. And in September of this year, they made an update that gave a lot of people, including me, a lot of hope. They introduced community labels, a form of self-moderation that allows people to label their own content as containing sexual themes, violence, or alcohol and drug use, at which point they'll be automatically blurred to users who are underage or have just marked those labels as things they don't want to see. Most people took that to mean that in a very good marketing move, Tumblr looked at the people leaving Twitter and decided to tentatively start removing the not safe for work ban to entice people to come back to them instead. Tumblr did very little to dissuade that misunderstanding, even stating that something they would allow, given it had the right community label, would be, and I quote, fan art of your favorite ship engaging in a very private moment. One staff member even said that female presenting nipples would be unbanned, and also that not safe for work fan art was okay again, but has since backtracked on both of those claims, and other Tumblr staff have confirmed this to be incorrect. As it turns out, Tumblr will not be lifting the ban on any kind of not safe for work art or content, at least not right now, which was a disappointing conclusion to reach after such a hopeful, misleading announcement. Even so, if community labels succeed, it's entirely possible that not safe for work content could eventually make a return in some capacity if this is the step in the right direction that artists hope it is. Regardless of whether it was deliberately deceptive or not, the announcement did get a lot of artists interested in Tumblr as a platform again. And even though our hopes were largely crushed in terms of the site going back to how it was, many of us still decided to revisit it as a potentially viable platform again anyway, largely because of Twitter's current unpredictability. For many of us, Tumblr used to be a safe, kind, and welcoming art community, and compared to the increasing amount of hate and anger and targeted attacks at both minorities and LGBTQ artists on Twitter now, a safe and welcoming community is exactly what a lot of us were looking for. And as it turns out, that community is kind of thriving again. Tumblr's numbers aren't drastically increasing or anything, which I imagine is because it's not where most people who are leaving Twitter right now are going, but it is where I'm seeing the most artists in particular going instead. And it's resulted in a bit of a revival of the art community, which has already been steadily recovering and growing over the past two years. Personally, I made a new Tumblr for my art, both for the sake of this video and to start distancing myself from Twitter, and despite the fact that I started from scratch with zero followers, I was actually shocked to see that my art did get engagement. And it's because Tumblr's tagging system and algorithm actually give you a fair shot at having your content be seen without needing a big following, which is wildly refreshing compared to every other platform. It's been so nostalgic to be back there again and reconnecting with that side of the art community, and honestly, I would strongly recommend it to any artist looking to branch out or replace Twitter altogether, at least to try it out and see if it's right for you. It's not its former self, and it still has its old dumb ban in place on not safe for work content despite the misleading new update, but especially with Twitter falling into such chaos right now, it's nice to have somewhere where the algorithm makes sense and you can actually find new artists to follow, and consistently see the content from the ones that you already followed. So in conclusion, should artists leave Twitter? If it's for moral reasons, not wanting to support Elon Musk, finding the chaos too stressful, or not wanting to subject themselves to the increase of hate speech, absolutely. You have to do what's best for your mental health, and Twitter is definitely not the best place for mental health lately, or ever historically, but it is worse now. But if they're leaving because they're sure the new algorithm and or Twitter blue post priority will completely destroy the art 
art community? No, I don't think they should leave. At least not yet. Elon Musk changes his mind once every five minutes, and if Stephen King can get him to lower the Twitter blue price from $20 to $8 just by expressing his disapproval, I don't doubt that it'll see a million more changes before anything is really finalized. It's entirely possible that Twitter blue users won't end up being the only ones to have their posts be visible, and even if they are, I still don't think that'll kill the art community altogether. There are so many artists there, and so many big names in the art community with hundreds of thousands of followers that will follow them wherever they go, even if that means staying on Twitter. The fact that many artists are already resisting by using lists to make sure they see their favorite artist content anyway tells me that for the most part, the community is more dedicated to protesting this change than leaving because of it, and I don't think that resilience is going away anytime soon. Maybe I'll eat my words, who knows. I'm sure you'll let me know in the comments. I do, however, think that artists should start looking into alternatives to Twitter just in case the worst does happen, because Elon is a ridiculously unpredictable dude, and we can't say for sure that he won't make the platform literally unbearable in every way. And even if it ends up being completely fine, you might find yourself in the position that I'm in now with Tumblr, where you're still using Twitter too, but also finding a lot of joy and success in a new community as well, which is never a bad thing. Whether or not you should go to Tumblr specifically is dependent entirely on your needs and preferences, although I wouldn't recommend going back because of the misunderstandings and hype surrounding the potential return of not safe for work content, as that is ostensibly not the case, at least for now. If you're just looking for an alternative art community where the art that you post might actually have a reasonable chance of being seen, high follower count or not, though, hell yeah, give Tumblr a shot. It was more than worth it for me. But for now, that's all from me on the big Twitter Tumblr art community debacle, although I'll definitely make updates as needed if anything big changes. What do you guys think, though? Are you still planning on using Twitter for your art, or are you planning on looking into alternatives? Will you get Twitter blue? Or have you gone back to Tumblr's art community instead? Let me know in the comments, because it's really interesting to see how everyone is handling this. Thank you guys for watching, and I hope you enjoyed today's video. Special thank you as always to channel members Cafe Soleil, Joseph Solomon, Unknown Code, and Abyss Reborn, as well as patrons Batman, Kyle Lowe, Blue Swanson, This Is Totally My Name, Unity, Cora Fear, Jamisha Walker, Shiroma Artiste, Elangshi, Soul Crystal, Kim Yi Yen, Stony Cobra 13, and Shamil Sheep for their support, and I'll see you in the next one. Thanks.